Good morning traders, Paul here with Gamma Edge. Today is Thursday, the 21st of July. Let's get started. Pause your players. Please read this. Important to you, important to us. If you agree, hit the play button. Market model continues on the bullish side. A couple things to call out. We had a good continuation across the open yesterday. I always like to see that. It's a very strong type of signal. This is uh, what occurred on Tuesday where we have the beginning of what we call ribbon inversion. And why this is important is this is our best long-term trending signal. So if you uh, had participated in this, you're now starting to really see the trend in, uh, evolve. And um, when we start seeing this, we start getting some confirmation that uh, things are, are looking pretty good. Now, that being said, we are slightly extended here, as you can see. That's, uh, you know, we could see a pullback. If we do pull back, we want to stay above this, uh, what we call the historical moving averages or the ribbon. If we pull back and drop below that, then the sig all the signals negate and you would close your long positions if you have, uh, uh, haven't already. Uh, the nice thing here is, is that this uh, keeps you in the trend, uh, even on a pullback. And so you'll be able to lock in some profits, uh, paper of course, but uh, nevertheless, uh, just watch and see what happens here. Uh, extensively back tested, proves out very, very well, and uh, would urge everyone to take a good look at it. Index condition, uh, we're almost at parity here in the SPX. That's uh, where the net negative gamma, uh, which is short term puts, uh, is equal to the net positive gamma, uh, short term calls. This is a constructive bullish type of setup. Uh, we've been watching day over day the red wing get smaller and the green wing get bigger uh, that means calls are being added puts are being closed over here on the spy though not as constructive we're actually seeing puts being closed that's good uh, but we're seeing calls come down and that's not necessarily constructive this could be a one day flash or it could be something that's a little more nefarious we'll just have to watch and see what's happening the cues, uh, you can see that uh, we actually are continuing to build on the call side, short-term calls, that's good. Calls are going in and out, or in and up, I should say, and that's very, very good. And the IWM, despite its uh, uh, being broken for months, uh, is continues to improve. We are seeing calls go in. We're starting to see some, some real demand here on the short, uh, on the small caps in the short term, and that is constructive. Volatility, uh, remember yesterday, 9 a.m. was the expiry for the VIX. This is the monthlies. Um, we did see a significant drop. Uh, we also saw some calls increase yesterday. That's uh, very interesting in just the bigger picture. We want to pay attention to that. Uh, part of this was the monthly expiry, but also uh, people are positioning. You can see over here that we almost have equal amounts that are positioning for the August, which uh, is a little counter to what we've been watching. We've been watching the November, October, and September's being uh, configured more on the call side. Now we're starting to see a short-term pull in here. So we wanna, wanna take a look at this and, uh, and keep an eye on it. Here's the distribution of where those strikes are. And you can see that there are some opening positions down here in the put side and uh, up here in the call side, as well as short-term calls in this particular area. Taking a look at the true delta and the true gamma, uh, price continues to go up. The blue line is the same on all three charts. We've got the downward sloping uh, true gamma zero and the downward sloping true delta zero. Both short term and long term uh, structure of the SPX is still to the downside. And we are looking heavily here at uh, the SPXA, which is the AM settled. We think this is mostly institutional money. And as a result of that, uh, they are still positioning. We're not seeing a major turn up here. They are still positioning for lower prices uh, out in the future. SPX structure looking into today, we did have a move upward in minus trend, but as we showed yesterday in some of the edge rater tests that we've done, uh, there is no real edge here uh, when we see something like that. So don't read too much into this uh, when combined with that strong CT signal that we have. Uh, just something to be aware of. Um, we have the zeros that are down here. They're relatively stable. We are getting this up and down. This is why it says down one day, up one day. We are kind of oscillating back and forth, which is just normal, stable behavior. 
looking here at the key levels, that 39.50 is uh, showing itself as a fairly dominant level in the PM expiry, which is here on the left. The combo expiry is still 4,000. You can see it's almost zero. It's almost been neutralized here. Uh, it's actually quite easy from where we sit to actually blow through 4,000, but I'll show you. Uh, we've got a couple things to, to look at here as we go higher. Uh, as I just said, that 4,000 le uh, level in the PM, uh, we're now net positive as we go through here, so this will act as somewhat as an attractor coming up, and the gamma level is also positive, so no sign changes there, and we're looking pretty good. Just above it, though, are the JPM strikes, and these JPM strikes have not really changed in terms of their net notional on the delta, and they actually got a little worse here on the um, on the call, or excuse me, on the gamma side. When we see something like this, this could be a temporary hiding area, so we want to be very cognizant that we could push higher and we could stall in this particular area. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Above this, though, if we do push higher than that 4,005 strike, you can see that we start to have some development out here in the 410 to 425 area, and you can see how you know we've got a lot of green that's developed across the uh, across the uh, PM complex. To the downside, just want to call your eye uh, for the PM complex. The transitions 3900 to 3910. If we come down here, these could be a parking area depending on where the zero DTE influence is uh, on the day. Looking at the zero DTE, uh, take a close look here that that 4910 uh, becomes the top of where we have a lot of gamma that's coming off today. Um, again, that transition's a little higher than what I showed on the previous slide. This is the zero DT, so this is what vaporizes today, 3935 to 3940. Five uh, down in this area, we could could hide. You can see we get into some net negative gamma once we start putting uh, ourselves uh, below this uh, 3935 area. Um, if we slip into this area, you'll see here in a second that uh, uh, there's actually probably uh, some support in here, and we'll talk about that here momentarily. But I, I don't think we're going to get below 3900 due to the zero DTE action. I think that would uh, be supported down to 3900. You can see that is the dominant expiry for net negative gamma here. To the upside, uh, I don't think 4050 is within uh, reality here, and there's nothing there from the zero DTE to really um, uh, influence us above that. I think uh, the 4010 area is likely if we are to get any influence from the, the expiry. If we push upward here, we could see a stalling up here. Remember, uh, the SPX is cash settled, not equity settled, so there is no great pressure for us to monetize and necessarily pull back down. Uh, the SPX combo, uh, which is the AM and the PM, I uh, just want to call your eye out here. This is that 4,000 strike. We've almost neutralized it out of the picture in terms of deltas. Very, very strong gamma. So as we push through this area, we could literally get some wind in our sails to push us higher. And you can see this is a fairly dominant level that's uh, really changed quite a bit its character in the last couple days. Up here at 4,005 is that JPM strike. This actually has not changed a dramatic amount day over day. So. Uh, again, this could be a, a respite, a hiding area into the close. Uh, I would like to, even though this 8 million is well within the absorption range from the dealers, it's in a sea of green, and so this could become a stalling area or a temporary area of liquidity, and we're going to want to have to watch what, what's going on there. But note, this is the largest gamma of the, uh, of the complex right now, so if we do push through this area, there's going to be a lot of wind in the sails to, uh, to adjust. To the downside, this 3910 to 3875 is, is one pocket of negative gamma, still very positive on the, uh, the deltas. Um, so we could push down into this area and it could offer a little bit of support, especially as we get down here. And then if we lose this area, which is always possible, uh, the 3860, 3865 area becomes kind of that last line in the sand in the SPX complex. If we drop below that 3860, 3865 area, we turn into a negative uh, uh, gamma region and we'll start neutralizing and most likely the puts will go in neutralizing a lot of the positive uh, delta that you see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Taking a look at the SPX, um, just a couple things to call out. The strike here at 4,000 is just hugely dominant now compared to yesterday. I urge everyone to go back to yesterday and take a look. The uh, strike at 4,005, which is the JPM short calls, still needs to be neutralized. The key takeaway is that we have broken out of the base of the transition, and we are now 
really starting to move upward through the uh, the overall structure. This is important. This is what we need for the bullish signal to continue. Um, and this will continue to pull us upward, knowing, of course, that we've got this as our last line. You can see all the other negative gamma that was impacting us yesterday has vaporized. It's been neutralized, uh, which is important. Right? So upward progress is, uh, is getting clear. If we take a look at the downside, a uh, little problematic, a little worrisome for the bears is that, uh, or, or the bulls, uh, depending on how you look at it, is that we are continuing to lose gamma. Uh, down here. We're seeing the closing of puts. Uh, we didn't really move much from yesterday, maybe 20 points. And so it's not just that gamma or spot price has moved up, decreasing the amount of gamma that we're seeing. Even though the relative magnitudes are, are, are constant across the days, we're actually seeing just a net drop. And uh, that's problematic. Liquidity is vaporizing down here. And as liquidity vaporizes on your downside protection, when you need it, there's not going to be anything there to sell. And so part of the theory behind this is, is that if you lose your downside protection, um, people are, first of all, will start paying a premium for this. That's one thing and that'll be good for the market makers. But two, um, the market makers are going to be able to effectively set their prices on the spreads and uh, it's going to become more expensive, lower liquidity, not a good situation and so you're going to see volatility as this gets smaller and smaller here on the left we could see volatility actually increase quite a bit uh, when we don't have that liquidity so what's the uh, the summary for today market model it's extended as i said but bullish trend continues we're in the longest the best signal that we have for uh, for the bullish trend um, pay attention if you're not increasing your long exposure you may be missing out uh, paper trading of course Daily change in the wing charts, uh, improvement across the board except for the SPY. Go back and look at that. Uh, the zeros of the complex are stable. They're oscillating up and down. That's normal behavior. That's fairly good. Uh, the next target remains at 4,000, 4,005 strike uh, takeout zone. If we can get above that, then we've got plow through the 410 to 425. I think we probably pause as we get through here. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the zero DTE influences that, if at all. Downside protection, as I was just saying, below the 3900 strike is vaporizing. It's a weak structure for liquidity, excuse me. And so uh, as a result, I would consider some zero cost downside protection right now. Do buy insurance when you don't need it. So that's it for today. If you like today's content, I urge you to come and join us at GammaEdge.us. That'll get you into our Discord, 14-day free trial, all the tools turned on, um, great group of traders. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good place to be. Uh, really enjoy working with everyone there. Uh, a lot of different styles, a lot of different skills. Uh, follow us on Twitter, please, at Gamma Edges with an S. And then here on YouTube, if you like today's content, let me know. Uh, smash that like button and, of course, subscribe so you get notified next time we post something. So with that, I bid everyone adieu. Uh, have a great Thursday. Hope to see you in the Discord. Take care.